Payback. Your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomberito, and Brockland GMC. Alton Bell Casino, always your best bet. Boatman's with home equity loans designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. Your neighborhood, St. Louis Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Corporate mortgage services, home loans are all we do. Hardy's restaurants for crispy, juicy fried chicken. And buy Coca-Cola, always best on ice, always Coca-Cola. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. They're worried here in Alberta about the possibility the Oilers might go south of the border. But tonight, they're very much here, a rather small crowd, and the Blues are in Edmonton for the first time this season. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Canada. I'm Ken Wilson, along with Joe Micheletti, Bruce Affleck, and Rick Mahar are here. It has been a long road trip. And <laughs> When the Blues started the trip by losing three in a row, I think everybody said... For tonight's game, as we mentioned earlier, back in goal, a workhorse, Curtis Joseph. And in goal for the Edmonton Oilers tonight, Bill Ranford. The Blues didn't see Bill Ranford earlier in St. Louis as he was out with the flu, but he's back in there tonight. He certainly plays the majority of the games. Fly Southwest Airlines. It's just plain smart. Our officials for tonight's game, the referee tonight, Terry Gregson, the linesman, Sweet Knox, and Ray Scapanello. Well, the Blues are set to go. They are going to tonight sit out Tom Tilly, who's still bothered by the flu. Healthy Dan LaPerriere and Basil McRae will sit it out. And on the other side, Craig McTavish out with an injury. Sean Podine and Ilya Biakin are out. And we're set to go here at the Northlands Coliseum. And the Blues on the puck. And it's Butcher playing it ahead, and Sutter shoots it in. He's on with Shanahan and Korolev. Here's Bob Beers, who started the year with Tampa Bay, leaving the puck in the corner for Olison, and the Blues send it through the goal mound. Here's Stephen Rice on a line with Doug Wade and Scott Pearson, and the puck out and back in over the Edmonton blue line, and the Blues are offside. Now, uh, Ricky and, and Bruce talked about Brendan Shanahan prior to the game, and what a force he has been the last the last couple of games. I think Ken with the move of Shanahan off the line with Craig Janney has given Brendan Shanahan or at least made him feel like he had a little bit more responsibility now. The line with Shanahan, Ron Sutter, and Igor Korolev on the other side has played extremely well the last couple of games. Shanahan, 51 goals last season, has 20 this season in the faceoff outside. The Edmonton blue line and a loose puck at the red line. Brown there, and he'll rocket it in. And Ranford behind the goal leaves it for Dave Manson. Manson, number 24, a pass off Jason Arnott out to center ice. And the Blues dump it back in. Now here's a chance for Manson. He's slowed up by Shanahan. Sutter gets bumped from the puck out over the blue line. Butcher shoots it back in, a delayed offside. And the Blues put themselves onside. Manson beats the center ice on to Corson from Seeger, and the puck tipped in, and Butcher clears it around the boards up to Janney. He gets it around Richardson to center ice. Here's Miller into the Edmonton zone. He's tied up by Arnott, gets the puck back, and he's poked check behind the net. It's centered. And Miller shoots wide, another centering effort, and Shane Corson clears to the corner. And the puck controlled by Zdeno Seeger. He gets it up on the right wing. And now the Oilers on the attack as the two teams change. Edmonton trying to work in. Out in front is Corson, and the pass knocked away. And then Hennigan checked by Buckberger. But Hennigan out of the corner with a feed to Janney. At center ice to Miller, and he'll shoot it in, and the Blues are changing again. Adam Bennett, the ex-Blackhawk with a puck. Working it to center ice. Buckberger on with Utech and DeBrus. Trying to get a shot, Vladimir Diutek, he can't. He's pinned to the boards, and Bookberger takes a hit from Bassett. But Kelly Bookberger into the corner, centering for Bennett, and Bozon has him covered. And here's Igor Kravchuk back in his own end. Clearing the center ice to Louis DeBrus. He works into his own zone. Can't clear, Bassett knocks the puck behind the net. And the Oilers take over. Then they lose it. Here's Karamnov flipping it into the corner. Bennett now right behind the net to Kravchuk up on the near side. His pass at center ice knocked down by Vyutek. Then he loses the puck. And here is Murray Barron who's missed some games with a groin injury shooting it in. Gordon loses the puck. Gets it back from Zombo. Gordon the pass at center ice intercepted. And moving in is Prokhorov. But Karamnov offside. 
And play stopped. 228 gone. No score. First period. Well, one change that Coach Glenn Sater has made since taking over is he has his team playing more offensive. We'll notice tonight that the Oilers defensemen will try and move up on the play at every opportunity. They're not shooting the puck in the zone all that often. They're trying to carry the puck over the blue line. Now, the problem that is called is that has caused is that the Oilers have been very susceptible to two-on-ones and to breakaways. Shoot the puck in, Montgomery check. Here is Scott Thornton trying to get the shot. He has trouble. Blue slide the puck on. Eric Beers playing it off in the corner. Blue's doing some good four checking. Oilers just clear the zone, and Zabo will have to go back in his own end right in front of Joseph. He feeds the puck up the middle. Montgomery tips it to the Oilers' blue line. Back to play it, young Kirk Maltby. Around too far for Beers. Blue's intercept. Then the puck overskated by Montgomery. Here's Kelly Chase working in front. He can't get a shot. Now wrap around a tip and a centering effort by Montgomery. But Basson knocked down. He gets up. He's a bit feisty bumping with Maltby as Ranford has the puck in his glove. No score. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. We have played three minutes and 12 seconds in this game, and we have yet to see a shot on goal by either team. Face off to Ranford's right. Blues win the draw, and a shot hits the side of the post by Shanahan. Now behind the net, here's Ron Sutter. He's taken out by Richardson, and Korolev finds the puck loose. Korolev works in front. Korolev a shot. Ranford the save, and Shanahan turn it around before he can get a shot. But the Blues keep the pressure on. Here's Shanahan to the point to Brown. Off the end boards, the puck gets the back of the net. Now in the corner, Manson gets in the way. The puck cleared up the wing, and it is shot out by Scott Pearson. Blues go deep in their own end. Here's Brown clearing the center ice. He takes a hit from Stephen Rice, and play is stopped, and we'll have a faceoff out at center ice. Well, the early pressure by the Blues right after right after the faceoff that was deep in Ippington's zone, they won the draw. Shanahan was able to get the initial shot that hit the side of the net, and then Shanahan interfering to give Orlev the opportunity to walk in front from the corner, and Ranford made the save, and the Blues were unable to get a hold of the rebound. There's no score coming up to the four-minute mark. And the puck shot in by the Russian Igor Kravchuk. And the Blues back for it. They've got Brown and Butcher on defense. All up on the right wing. He lets the puck get by him. Kravchuk keeps it in. Shot blocked by Butcher. And then a drive right on by Arna. And it's cleared away. And here's Hall clearing to center ice. Hall with Janney and Miller. Oilers with a puck. Seager ahead to Kravchuk. Now to Arna over the line. And shot! Jason Arnott, an impressive rookie. He just turned 19 in October. Now Jeff Brown gets caught up in the neutral zone, goes right past the puck carrier. Arnott just takes the pass and walks in. Let's go a shot that Joseph made the initial save on and then bobbled, and Arnott was there also to try and get the rebound. Darth Butcher tried to go down and block the shot. That may have screened Curtis Joseph somewhat, but Joseph able to make the save and then cover up on the rebound. The face off to Joseph's left. And Basson wins the draw from Arnott. And the puck shot around the boards and out to center ice by Hedekin. And Grant Chuck back in his own end. Away from Karam North, and a pass hits Hedekin. And the Blues at center ice. Bozon flips it ahead, and it's taken away. Seeger. The Slovakian dumps it into the Blues territory, and here's Doug Crossman back. Behind the net into the corner to Hedekin. Up the boards for Bozon. Bennett checks him. And then Hedekin starts out three on two. Gets it back from Basson. Right wing for Karamnov. By him into the corner. He leaves the puck for Basson in front. A shot deflected by Bozon right on. And Ranford grabs the puck in the crease to stop the action. 
Or the Blues quick on the puck, and it started from their own zone. They're keeping their feet going. They're jumping on loose pucks. Brett Hedekin ends up leading the rush out to three on two. The return pass to Hedekin from Basson on the skate, but Karamnov stays with it, and the Blues stay on the puck. And then the quick shot and in front is Philippe Bozon, and somehow he was able to deflect the shot. And again, Ranford makes the save. Here's Montgomery. He'll try to win the draw back to Zombo. He's tied up, however, by the newcomer, Peter White. And the Oilers in their own end with a punt. Having trouble is Frederick Olison, the newcomer from the Jets. Now here's Scott Thornton back deep. He's on with White and Maltby. Up to White at the red line. He'll shoot it in wide of the Blues net. The punt gets the back of the goal. Barron takes a hit from Maltby. Clears far side, intercepting. And trying to feed in front is Thornton. They can't get that done. Then Barron throws his weight around behind the net. Zombo lets Thornton get away. He's got White in front. A shot! And Joseph makes the save on Scott Thornton. Now they're dangerous. And a good play defensively by Chase to clear the puck out. Here's Beers back in his own end across the way to Malpe. Ahead to White. And then White tied up. He looks back to the blue line to Beers to the dot. A pass in front. And that's out of the reach of Louis DeBrusque. Puck kept in by the Oilers. There's no score in the first period. White tied up. Then Sutter throws a body check into the back of Maltby. Sutter dangerously stick handles out of his own end and shoots the puck in from the red line as both teams are changing. Ranford leaves the puck for Check it, not Crabchuck, but rather Olison. And the Oilers on the move. Here's Beers, three on two with VU Tech who takes the pass in the left wing. He takes a shot, the save, and the rebound cleared away by Shanahan. Nice play on DeBrusque by Butcher. The puck ends up on the left wing and trying to work in and knock down his core 11. Shanahan slides the puck to Brown. Now in the center circle to Janney. Left wing for Shanahan. He'll flip it in, and here's Manson back for Edmonton. No score coming up to the seven-minute mark. Left wing to DeBrusque, who just dumps the puck into the Blues end. Bookberger after it with Brown. There'll be no icing. Brown chips the puck to Hall. He loses it and gets it right back from Diutek. Hall advances the puck to Craig Janney. Janney into the Edmonton zone. He's checked, and Luke Richardson backhands the puck down the ice, and Hedekin retreats to play it. No score here at the Northlands Coliseum. Long Hedekin pass. Tipped away to Miller. Over the line. Trailed by Hawley. Gives Hall a puck and a return pass. Knocked away by Manson. Bookberger works out of his own zone for the Oilers. He'll flip the puck in. And the Oilers looking to complete a line change. Hedekin ends up with a puck behind the goal. Oilers changing on the go. Pass at center ice to Miller. Ahead for Janney. He knocks it down. Janney in front to Hall. He tips the puck just wide. And Adam Bennett clears the puck the length of the ice for the Oilers. Back to touch it. Crossman, a whistle, and an icing call against Edmonton. No score in the first period. This is St. Louis Blues. Brett Hall and Craig Janney trying to work their magic as they moved in. And Janney with the pass to Hall, who just deflected the puck wide of the net. And the faceoff near Ranford. Buck dropped, and it's played on the defense by Kravchuk. Here are the Blues, four checking, Basson causing havoc, and Kravchuk clears the puck around, far side, Hedekin. He'll take a shot, and a stick save by Ranford. And the puck knocked to center ice by the Oilers, and a fine check as Pearson was sent flying by Basson. Blues send the puck in. Would have been icing, but getting to it first is Karamnoff. He's tied up by Bennett. Then Bozon works behind the net. He's trying to get away from Waite, then takes a ride from Bennett. Here's Karamnoff. He's checked by another number 12, Stephen Rice. And the puck finally brought loose. Bozon has it in the corner. Bozon centers and no one there for the Blues. And the Oilers work up the ice. Scott Pearson, the former... Quebec Nordique and Maple Leaf is checked. Lifts it into the corner to Rice. Then he takes a bump from Zombo and back to play the puck to Romnov. He looks up and he gets hit immediately by Pearson. Puck deep in the blue zone. Basson slides it out to center ice and both teams are changing. Here's Bob Beers, right wing to Doug Wade, who's had a great year. Back to Beers, not away. He scores off the skate of Beers. Right to Joseph and Montgomery clears the zone. 
9-10 gone, no score first period. Look out, Shane Corson. He's tied up and bumped by Chase. Zombo behind the net. Nice little pass to Barron, and he's stripped of the puck. It's center to Corson. He can't get a shot before Barron runs into him. Loose puck in the corner. Beers moves up behind the net to Shane Corson. Now it's centered into the crease, and Joseph sprawls on the puck to stop the action with 10.29 to go here in a scoreless first period. Well, referee Terry Gregson has kept his whistle in his pocket for the first half of this first period, and we've seen a very physical first period. Both teams really taking runs at one another. Behind the play, there's been a lot of stick work, a lot of slashing, players pushing and shoving at one another, but referee Terry Gregson has decided to simply let these two teams play here in the early going. Quebec has beaten San Jose 7-5. to five. Dallas won at Vancouver 3-1 to one to bring you up to date on some other action. Here, Bob Berry's Blues are scoreless. And Glenn Sather's Oilers are scoreless in the first period. And a face-off near the Blues net. Puck goes to the boards. It's loose. And the Blues, Butcher has it. He sends it down the ice. And it'll go over the end red line. Touched by Beers. And that's an icing against the Blues. Well, Bob Berry, is, his team has come out, and they've had a lot of jump in this first period. They've really been on the puck, and that's something that he has been stressing, especially the last couple of games. And we talked about the last four periods, the third period in San Jose, and then the good effort they put together in Calgary. One noticeable difference has been their ability to jump on loose pucks and make plays. The Utech and Bassett on the faceoff, and the puck to Brown, who goes behind the net. Up the boards for Shanahan. He's checked. The Utech gets the puck, centers, and Butcher is there to Coralev at center ice. Far wing and the pass behind Sutter. And the Oilers back in their own end, and Beers just clears the puck out. Here's Jeff Brown turning in front of Joseph. Off the boards, and the pass is intercepted. Now the Oilers at center ice. Too far for DeBrusque in the near wing. And ahead comes Korolev on a feed from Butcher. Korolev checks. And the puck cleared up on the wing. Here's Buckberger in his sixth season with the Oilers. Ooh, left wing for DeBrusque. And he can't get the puck. Centers. And the Blues back to cover up. Now the Oilers trying to put some pressure on. The Utec works into the corner. Leads the puck for Louis DeBrusque. Then he sends it behind the net. Butcher gets in the way of the puck. Clears it up for Sutter. He bumps there with DeBrusque, and then it comes to Korolev. That center ice to Shanahan, one man back, and Manson spins Shanahan off the puck. 9-12 to go in a scoreless first period, and the Oilers just cleared a center ice. Crossman ahead to Hall. Both teams changing. Hall a pass for Shanahan, and Jason Arnott intercepts to Shane Corson. He'll shoot the puck in, go after it. He's checked in the corner by Crossman. Hall clears far corner. Arnott gets there. Leaves the puck behind the net for Corson. He takes a bump in the back from Crossman. Now Seeger trying to work in front. Drops the puck in the corner. Hedekin has to bend himself against two Oilers. And here's Corson centering. Crossman trying to clear loose puck in the crease. And Joseph has it covered. Still scoreless in the opening period here in Edmonton. And this is St. Louis Blues hockey. And, you know, we talked about this Edmonton team getting off to such a terrible start. Now they've only lost one game of their last six. And we talk about Glenn Sather taking over as coach. I think one of the other reasons this team is playing better, he is also the president and the general manager of this team. And I think his players are playing with a little bit of fear. I would think so. Puck in the blue zone. Basson falls down as he hits Seeger, centering to Richardson. He shoots, and that either went off Joseph or the crossbar, and the Blues flip the puck to center ice. Manson has it. His pass to Corson. Corson with Seeger and Arnott. Very potent line. Puck in the air, batted down in the Blues end. Blues can't clear it out. Here's Arnott. Oh, centering behind. Corson, who takes a shot and a pad save by Joseph. And the Blues, Basson gets the puck and drills it off the glass. The length of the ice, Manson touches it, and an icing call against the Blues. No score, first period, 12 minutes gone, and a break in the action. It ought to be a great time to break for the great taste of Bud Light. It's a big hit with fans everywhere because it won't fill you up, and it never lets you down. So fans, make it a Bud Light. And, you know, we talk 
about this team, and we've all seen what has happened in the last couple of years. This team has let go a lot of players, and they have gotten their payroll down to where they're in the bottom five teams in the league. And when uh, you mentioned Bill Ranford, that's one player that probably won't be here next year. He's going to be a free agent after this year. In fact, probably won't be a surprise if he's gone by the end of this season. They have really changed the landscape here. From the draw, face off, and the shot by Kravchuk, a stick save by Joseph. And then the puck goes into the crowd, and we'll have another face off deep in the blue zone. Of course, the big salaries, Ranford and Manson, and they look at it and they go, hey, we've got only 21 points. Uh, we're not going to win a Stanley Cup. We're going to lose money here this year. And it makes you, if you're an owner, I guess, want to cut the payroll even further. Yeah, and it makes uh, it makes you want to think also that Ranford may end up in Detroit. Detroit's still unhappy with their goaltending. And there's been some talk that they're after Ranford. And, of course, Detroit has some pretty good young talent on that team and draft picks that they could give up for Bill Ranford. They've got young players here in Edmonton already. More young players would fit in very nicely. Now the puck shot in, and it's offside. Edmonton and play stopped with 7.39 to go in a scoreless first period. I guess the issue also becomes when you look ahead with this franchise, will it be here in Edmonton next season? Will it be in Minneapolis at the Target Center or might it even be in some other city south of the border? Yeah, Glenn Sather mentioned this morning that he's trying to stay out of it because it's Peter Pocklington's team. But it, uh, it really hurts to see what this team has done over the past with their, their, their five Stanley Cups and whatnot and having such a difficult time drawing. Now the Oilers, a shot, save, course, and a drive, and Joseph out to make the save, and Brown clears to center ice. Bennett plays the puck across near side to Seeger. Back to the defense, grab Chuck to center ice to course, and he's spun around by Butcher, and Brown shoots the puck off the boards too far for Hall. Oilers at center ice, Seeger to course, and he's checked, and here's Janney. Now they puck on the far wing to Hall. Hall over the line in the slot, a shot, and it hits Ranford, and he falls on the puck. And he might have gotten some help from his teammates as to the location. There's a break in the action. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Cheers, weeknights at 10.30 on St. Louis 11. Glenn Sather said he wasn't going to put a checker on Brett Hall tonight. That may allow him to get a few more chances. He's able to go from the left-hand boards right to the center of the ice. And from the top of the circle, let go a hard shot that Ranford made the save on. He was looking around to try and find the puck before his defenseman came in to help him out and just slide the puck underneath him. From the faceoff in the Oilers zone, Edmonton with a puck. Into the middle to Doug Wade in his third NHL season. The former Ranger flips the puck in. Joseph clears it around the boards. All the way to the point knocked down and the Blues take over. A collision between Montgomery and Prokhorov. Now the Oilers at center ice. And Pearson shoots the puck in. Scott Pearson, Doug Waite, and Stephen Rice on this line for Glenn Sather. Blues in their own end. Crossman, long pass at center ice. Obviously offside as Montgomery was on the far side of the center red line now even though the blues have been outshot 10 to 5 in this period the one thing is that they've been able to keep the scoring chances down against Glenn Sather and his team and Ted Sater was mentioning this morning when he went over the game tape from the Calgary game that both teams had just nine good scoring chances in that game and that's markedly different from the previous games where the Blues have been, have been giving up many scoring chances, just nine apiece, and that really showed how close that game really was. We're down to 6.32 to go in the first period. Blues in Edmonton wrapping up a six-game road trip. They control the puck in their own zone. Hedekin up the far side, misses a check, tries to shoot it in, can't. Gets the puck again, a pass to Basson, and he'll backhand it to the side of the Edmonton net. Olison back to play it. The Swede is checked by Karamnov. Karamnov behind the Edmonton goal. Leaves the puck. Bozon looking in front. Oh, and a pass behind Hedekin. Back the other way. Edmonton on the attack. Here's Pearson. Pass and retreats to cover weight. And Pearson can't get a good shot. Now it's center. All the way back to the blue line. Luke Richardson near circle to Wade in the slot. And a shot 
That is off Pearson sticking wide. And the Blues clear the puck through center ice all the way back deep into the Oilers' end. And as Beers touches it, it is an icing call against St. Louis. The Blues' next game will be Thursday night at home at the arena against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Their first look at Terry Crisp's team. And then next Sunday night, the 26th, the Blackhawks at the arena. Monday night, the 27th, it'll be Montreal. And then the New York Rangers will be in. Four wonderful holiday home games. Those will also be college nights. And you simply present a valid college ID, and you can receive a $5 discount off tickets for those four games. Face off in the blue zone, and Zombo controls a bouncing puck. Rick Zombo playing with a sore shoulder. Did not play the other night in Calgary, though he was dressed. And the puck now deep into the Edmonton end. Manson up for DeBrusque. He has trouble with the puck. Korolev trying to steal it, but it's advanced to Buckberger. Now the pass at center ice knocked away, and finally getting it is Butek, and he shoots the puck in. Joseph clears it up far side for Shanahan. And he just dumps the puck to center ice. Richardson plays it over to Dave Manson. Up for Butek and Buckberger. Butek a pass hits Ron Sutter. And Igor Korolev takes over. Back to his defense to Zombo. Who looked a bit surprised to get the pass. Now it's center ice to Shanahan. Far wing. Sutter gets it over the line. Trying to work in. He gets a stick in the face from Vladimir Butek. And Sutter down. Behind the Edmonton net, Tom Nash wondering if he should go out, but no question there will be a penalty here against Edmonton. The Blues will have the power play. No score, first period in Alberta. And this is St. Louis Blues. Referee Terry Gregson has called his first penalty of the night. It's against, or it's on Ron Sutter, actually against the Edmonton Oilers, Vladimir Viutek. Coming back as Sutter is trying to get into the net, and the high stick catches him right across the bridge of the nose. And after the play, Sutter complaining that it should have been five minutes. There's a little bit of a scrape on the inside of his nose. Just two minutes, though, to Butek, and the Blues will have the first power play. 15.05, the time of the penalty. The Blues' power play is fifth in the league at 21%, but they struggle on the road they're 24th in the league on the road with their power play they set it up brown straight away near side to hall back to brown brown will shoot and it's knocked down loose puck in front of ranford as he knocks the puck down then it's cleared to the corner and slammed around behind the net by kirk maltby and that shook up terry gregson the referee and everyone else in sight <laughs> <laughs> he was just pounding his heart there a second ago <laughs> the oilers 15th in the league killing penalties at 80%, Blues work in. Maltby steals, tries the same thing again with nobody there. And the puck ends up <laughs> in the crowd. Kirk, you're only 20. Shoot it the other way. It's a lot easier. <laughs> you don't have to worry about caroms or killing anyone. Uh, he was going the long way, wasn't he? <laughs> Ronnie Sutter on the bench. And again, we talked about that high stick. Gave him just a little nick on the inside. Just next to the eye on the bridge of the nose. And... He was complaining there was a little bit of blood coming from that, and he was complaining to referee Terry Gregson that that should have been a five-minute major. Blues on the power play, 4-16 to go. Here in a scoreless first period, they have been outshot 10-6. Thornton taking the faceoff against Shanahan, who's on with Janney and Miller, Hall and Brown. Shanahan wins the draw to Brown. One-timer by Hull from the far point, and a pad saved by Ranford. And Edmonton shoots the puck the length of the ice, and they'll send on some fresh penalty killers. Now, Ken, one thing in this first period, the Blues have won the majority of the faceoffs this entire first period. Here they come. Janney in front for Miller off his skate. And a backhand shot stop. It's centered. Oh, robbery there of Janney by Ranford. Hole a blast. And that grazes the post as Ranford gets a piece of it. Blues try to keep the puck in far side. Hull chops at it. It's knocked down. And Edmonton's Richardson can't get out. Here's Hull to Janney. Janney along the far left wing boards to Miller. Shanahan's behind the net. Out to the far left point to Hull. 30 seconds to go in the man advantage. Now near point to Brown. Ahead on the near boards for Janney. Blues on the perimeter here with a man advantage. In the slot is Shanahan. He's brought a drive and a big save there. A blast from the blue line. And then the Oilers get the puck. And it's Dave Manson clearing up the length of the ice. Well, Bill Ranford has 
we've shown in this last 45 seconds why he is one of the top goaltenders, stopping Miller and then Janning. Now the Blues on the attack, Hull through center ice, all over the Edmonton line, curls a pass, chip behind Sutter. Then Pearson ahead for Doug Waite. He's in over the Blues line. Then he's well covered by Crossman in the puck at center ice. And the penalty is over. The Utech back on. Here's Karamnoff. Drop pass. A shot. And a drive caught by Ranford is Ron Sutter. From inside the Oilers blue line lets a shot go. And all of a sudden, the Blues, who are outshot 10-5, out shooting the Oilers 12-10. And Bill Ranford has kept this game scoreless. Janney, Miller, Miller ends up being able to get the puck up front after kicking it off his skate. Ranford made the save, and then Ranford somewhat out of position as Janney was able to corral the loose puck. Miller with the first chance, and then Miller will just get the puck in front, kind of squiggles through a few players, including Ranford, and Janney is there, and Ranford makes a great pad save. On Craig Janney. The Blues did everything on that power play except score. They had five shots during that two-minute span. And a, and a couple of good chances from Brett Hall from uh, from 40 feet out. Blues win the draw. Hedick in a shot deflects well wide. We're down to 225 to go in the first period. The Oilers wait, clears the puck out of his end. Hedick leaves it at center ice out of Bozon's reach. Then Olison ahead for Doug Waite. Wade into the blue zone. He's well covered. Then Sutter there, and the play is offside. Edmonton, 2.13 to go, first period. And there's no score, and they're really talking about Doug Waite up here in Western Canada. Yeah, Doug Waite was the player acquired from the New York Rangers last year for Asa Tikkanen. Of course, Tikkanen, one of those high-salary players, and wasn't playing all that well the last year and a half, so they traded him off to New York. Got Doug Waite, who's been a real good player for this team. They talk about one of the most consistent players on this team being Doug Wake. He's playing on a line with Stephen Rice and Scott Pearson. Pearson's the old-timer. I think he's about 23. The others are 22. Gives you some idea of the youth they have here. This has a, really the composition in many respects of an expansion team now here in Edmonton. And the puck comes out, and the Oilers bring it back into the blue zone offside and play is stopped again. Stephen Rice, uh, another ex-New York Ranger. Well, they've got some youngsters and of course Pearson from Toronto and Quebec uh, on this line here. So not too much homegrown talent for the Oilers. Now the other thing that they have done besides getting young talent is they've been able to stockpile draft choices as well. At center ice, the veteran Olison shoots the puck in. Far side Rice trying to run over Hedekin then passing back to check weight. Here's Crossman behind the net. Soft pass up the wing, and the puck comes to center ice. Rice has it. Gives it away to Karamnov. Oh, and the puck slides away from Vitaly to Ranford. He clears into the corner. Centering is Bozon, and Basson can't get a stick on the puck. Then Pearson feeds to center ice, and the Blues are there. Now Hedekin at the St. Louis blue line. Back deep to Crossman. Both teams looking to change. Far side to Hedekin. Ahead for Bozon. Intercepted, and here's Seeger flying up the right wing into the blue zone. He looks for someone to pass to. Drops the puck off, and a shot goes off Zombo. And wide of the net. As the brusk let one go, and now it's center ice. The Blues with a puck. Here's Karamnov trying to work in with Sutter. Sutter tips the puck in the corner to Karamnov. Then he's checked and loses the puck. And we're down to under one minute to go in the first period. Shane Corson up the left wing. Seeger and Arnott with him in front. Corson, he can't get a shot. And then the puck comes loose as Joseph is sprawled in the goal area and play stopped by Terry Gregson. That was quite a rush by Shane Corson. Shane Corson, not known for his moves with the puck, puts a good move on Rick Zombo, and then with his strength is able to get around him. And then the late player coming in, Arnott, was able to get the rebound. Very good move by the former Montreal Canadian Shane Corson, who has scored 15 times this year. But Joseph's concentration again tonight is amazing. All that tra traffic in front of him, players sliding at him. He's still able to keep his eye on the puck and was able to make the save on the rebound by Jason Arna. No score here under a minute to go. The Oilers with a record at home of six wins, ten losses. Keep in mind, they've won their last three here. Their last two comprising their two most recent wins in a three-game winning streak. 
winning is not something that they've talked about much here this season. They win the draw, and then a shot from the point knocked down by Kravchuk. The puck centered by Kravchuk all the way back to the far point. Bennett moves the puck ahead, and it's chopped away from Corson. Butcher up the near wing to Bassett. Half a minute to go in the period. Blues cannot work the puck out. Round behind the net. His pass knocked down by Arnott. Out to the right point. Here's Bennett a drive, and I believe that hits Brown. Now Corson tries to center, does. Bassett intercepts. 17 seconds to go in the period, up to Sutter. He feeds to an open right wing, and here's Igor Kravchuk getting it to Seeger. Now in the center circle to Adam Bennett ahead to Seeger, and the puck goes deep into the blue zone off his stick. Seeger tied up in the corner by Hall. Corson centers, trying to get the puck. Shanahan, and he does as Arnott is taken down. And there's the siren. That is the end of the first period. In the period, the Blues outshoot Edmonton by a margin of 12 to 11. There is only one penalty in the period, and that was that high-sticking penalty to Vladimir Biutek. So Joe Nicoletti said it would be a low-scoring game, and certainly through 20 minutes, it has been. Nothing, nothing here at the Northlands Coliseum. Team gets to join Doug Wade, the 22-year-old, in his third NHL season. He's been hot lately, seven points in his last uh, three games, all wins for Edmonton. And I guess, uh, you know, people talk about the coaching change and things like that. Uh, you need to see coaches go, I'm sure, but uh, I guess it woke everybody up. Is that the case? Yeah, for sure. I think any time there's a change of that, you know, that's substantial. I think uh, there's a wake-up call for the whole team, and it's a shame it had to happen to a guy like Teddy. Uh, Teddy Green is a great coach, and uh, he did a great job with us. It was our fault, but... Uh, Unfortunately, somebody has to pay the price, and uh, it was him, and it, it did wake us up. How about yourself personally? You've gotten off to a good start. Uh, feel pretty comfortable in your third year? Yeah, I'm starting to feel more comfortable with the role here. It was a little change uh, from New York, playing third and fourth line. I'm starting to get a little more ice time in uh, key situations. So it's uh, it's been good for me, and hopefully it can get better, and I can uh, continue to contribute. I know you may not want to look back at a trade, but uh, kind of a cute story along with it. Uh, the day you got traded, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you had to play right at Madison Square Garden for the Oilers. And you asked somebody on your team about Podine, if he spoke English or not. Is that true? Yeah, well, I was on his line, so uh, <laughs> it's funny. It's just kind of a weird name the way he has it. He spells it S-H-J-O-N, so it's kind of, I don't know if he was Swedish or what, so I asked somebody if he spoke English. But it's funny, now he's my roommate, so uh, I definitely know he speaks English and a little too much sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> How about this year? Uh, you know, there was some talk, and I saw in the paper today where there's a chance maybe you could go to the All-Star game. I guess that'd be kind of nice to go back to Madison Square? Oh, that'd be a dream, you know. It's, it's, you know, may not be fair to some other guys in the league, you know, as far as uh, how there are a lot of good players out there right now, and somebody has to go from every team, but it, it'd be an honor definitely to play with some great players, and, uh, you know, you can't worry about that, though. If that happens, it happens. I just got to try to, you know, we got a big hole to get out, out of here, you know, to make the playoffs, so it's a lot of work to be done. Hopefully I can keep going, and, and the team can keep winning. You talk about not worrying about things, uh, and I know it's again in the press, uh, the moving and the owner and everything. Uh, how's that played with the team? I mean, Minnesota went through it last year. Can you sympathize with them now? I think uh, it's a little tougher for, for a team like Minnesota. You look at our team, and our average age is about 23, 24, and uh, we got guys like Buckberger and Mac McTavish that have houses here. I think that's about it. So uh, there's not a lot of ties here. It's just there's a couple friends, but, uh, you know, if we move, we just want to play hockey. We're, we're a young group, excited group to play, and uh, wherever we go, we want to play. I mean, we wouldn't mind, mind staying here, but uh, whatever happens, happens. You know, the uh, excitement from the fans, from what I've gathered, uh, the team has played exciting hockey. It's a little different than they've been used to the last couple of years. It's a little more wide open, uh, but very exciting. Yeah, we are we are trying to play an offensive game, you know, although uh, we kind of rely on Billy a little bit too much there. He's, he's a great goalie, and he's been doing great for us. But uh, we're trying to play a little wide open, get a lot of shots on the other team, and uh, the fans seem to be liking it a little more. Doug, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. That's Doug Waite from the Edmonton Oilers. Now let's go back upstairs to Ken Wilson. You know, Ed, it's time your house did something nice for you. Who are you? I'm the boatman's guy, here to talk about home equity loans. Low rates, the interest is usually deductible. You just X out those taxes. Mildred! Mildred, come out here. It's about a home equity loan from Boatman's. Hey, Ed's pumped. Oh, he's a piece of work. Of course, and that means the Blues Holiday Gift Pack. It is available now, and I know you'll want to take advantage. You can either receive two tickets to the Calgary game early in January or two tickets to the Edmonton game. And along with the two tickets, you receive either a Blues workout suit. This is all part of the $70 package, a wonderful Blues workout suit. Or second, you get the terrific package of, well, it's Youngster's Fun Pack. It's got a whole slew of things, the hockey sticks, the Brett Hall figure. That's all part of the $70 package. Or the T-shirt package, the sweatshirt actually in cap. 
as your third choice. Extra tickets are $25. The entire package, two tickets, and your selection of the gifts is $70. The operators are on duty right now, 1-800-BLUES-16, standing by to take your order. And now as we get ready to start this second period, scoreless between the Blues and the Edmonton Oilers, there was a situation in that first period where the Blues had some chances and Bob Barry's team couldn't finish up on some of those. We talked about the Oilers playing more of an offensive style now that Glenn Sather is back behind the bench again. We see their defensemen taking all kinds of chances and Bob Barry's team was able to take advantage of those uh, on a couple of miscues, was able they were able to take advantage of a couple of two-on-ones, but again, it was Bill Ramford that had to come up with the more difficult saves in that first period. We're set to go. Both teams are at full strength. And it'll be Ron Sutter facing off against Doug Waite. And Sutter wins the draw. Back to Butcher. Not a Brown. He races to the red line. Shoots the puck in. Ranford cannot stop it behind the net. Here's Korolev working in front. Oh, and a pass to Shanahan. Knocked away. And the puck cleared out by Pearson. And the Oilers on the move on a three-on-two. Doug Wade a shot. And it goes off Brown. Wade in the corner. Crunched. It's centered. And Joseph knocks the puck away. And then play stopped by Terry Gregson, the referee. And he is headed to the penalty box as Brown and Pearson mix it up a bit. Now Brown's going to end up going off for cross-checking Pearson in front. Edmonton was able to come out of their own zone and create a three-on-two. And on, on the play, the Blues only had one player back. That was Ron Sutter. Before Brown was able to come back and Pearson in front trying to jump on a rebound. Ron cross-checks him down. And Edmonton will have their first power play chance. The Oilers are 20th in the league this season on the power play. They're successful just about 17% of the time. And the player to watch on this Oiler power play will be Shane Corson. He's not out there on this shift as he just finished one, but generally he is the player around the front of the net and has seven power play goals. The Blues 22 for 22 in their road trip here. They've been perfect killing penalties. And they are first in the league overall at 86%. Oilers with a puck in the blue zone. Now on the boards. Bozon pitched to the boards by Pearson. Butcher is there with Rice and Waite. The puck to Rice. Right point. Oh, it's a drive. Great save, Joseph. And then Waite shoots wide on the rebound. The Oilers in a scoreless second period with a man advantage. They keep the puck in. Here is Rice trying to move in front. Checked by Butcher. Now Pearson leaves the puck for Wade on the right wing boards. He moves to the top of the circle. Side of the net for Pearson in front. And Pearson a shot stop and the puck loose. And Basson comes up with it. And he'll clear the puck the length of the ice. Boy, Curtis Joseph with an outstanding save and then is able to follow the puck as it rolled right through the crease before the Blues were finally able to clear it. Now the Oilers with a man advantage to center ice. Olison, the 27-year-old Swede, poke check, loose puck. It comes to Seeger. He'll go behind the net. Seeger into the near corner, out to the right point to Olison. Far point, one timer. It's deflected wide. The drive from Bob Beers. Seeger can't control the puck. Shanahan gets it, and he dumps it down the ice. We're down to 35 seconds remaining in the Brown penalty. And again, Corson was all alone in front of the net. He deflected that long shot by Beers just wide of the far post. The Blues killing the penalty with Basson and Bozon, Zombo and Barron. Blues almost got in trouble when the puck came out of the corner in front. Now Corson to the far point. Near side to Dave Manson. Ahead for Seeger and then his pass intercepted by Zombo. He can't clear the puck out. It's shot behind the Blues net. Zombo blasted up the boards. Knocked down by Kravchuk to Shane Corson behind the net. Ooh, the pass out of the reach of Seeger. Now the penalty to Brown is over. Puck in the blue zone. And it is fired by Barron back into the Edmonton end. Grab Chuck leaves it for Manson, who lets it go to center ice. Here's Doug Crossman. He'll just flip the puck into the Edmonton end, and both teams are changing. There's no score early in the second period. Corson stopped. That allows Janney to work in. In front to Hall. He shoots and scores. Brett Hall on a feed from Craig Janney. 
the Blues take the lead one to nothing. What a play by Garth Butcher. We've talked about the Blues in the last couple of games of forcing things in the neutral zone. Garth Butcher anticipates the puck coming up the boards, so he just steps right in to Shane Corson. That jars the puck free, and Janney walked in. Miller was there. It was a three-on-two. Hull was wide open on the other side with Miller actually as a decoy. The perfect pass from Janney. Hull with a one-time shot, and he beats Ranford, and it's one nothing Blues. Number 19 for Brett Hall. He has 41 points now, and he leads the team in points. Brendan Shanahan has 40 points, and Brendan leads the team in goals with 20. Here are the Oilers moving in, trying to force his way in Thornton, and the puck goes to Brown, who's hit by Thornton. Blues clear to center ice, and the puck will slide back into the Edmonton end. Danny and Butcher get the assists. The time of Hall's 19th goal of the year, 2.48. Here in the second period, Blues lead it one to nothing. This is Thornton flipping the puck in, and Hall chops it to center ice. Thornton has it, gives it up. Then a pass for Maltby knocked away. Here's Thornton now. Good opportunity. He gets the puck right back. Can't get a shot. On the line with White and Thornton. Maltby back to the point. Beers keeps it in. He'll knock the puck ahead. Janney socks it down. Now the corner to Maltby. He'll center, and Brown intercepts to Hall at the red line to Janney. Janney alone. Both teams are changing. He'll just slide the puck behind the Edmonton net. And we're just shy of the four-minute mark. Here in the second period, Blues lead it one to nothing. The Oilers work the puck to center ice. White shoots it in. It's caught by Joseph. He leaves the puck for cross, but under pressure. His pass at center ice to Prokhorov with Montgomery and Chase. The pass to Montgomery, backhander, and Ranford makes the save as the Blues get an opportunity and Chase sprains some snow into Ranford's face and the Oiler players not very happy with Kelly Chase. Red Hall has scored. The Blues lead the Oilers one to nothing and this is St. Louis Blues hockey. Why is it always the same old story? Why ask why? Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste. Bud Dry. When it comes to a great beer, we will. Now, Glenn Sather said he wasn't going to put a checker on Brett Hull because he's the player that everyone comes to see. But in the first period, he had three shots. He scored the only goal of the game in... I think Glenn may change his uh, change his mind on that if things continue to go this way. Oilers can't clear. Hedick in a pass just out of the reach of Chase. Chase knocked into the boards and Broker off to Chase a shot and ran for the save on Kelly Chase. Grab Chuck leads the attack back the other way. Puck on goal. Joseph is saved. Now the Oilers dangerous, but the puck slips away. Hedick in ahead to Broker off. He's behind the defense, but Bennett back. And he's helped out by DeBrusque, who clears up for Bookberger. He's hit by Montgomery. Back to Louis DeBrusque behind the Oilers' net. Now to Crab Chuck. Up at center ice to the Utech. Now to Kelly Buckberger. Here's Buckberger working in along the blue line. Leaves the puck. Manson steps into one right on. And a save by Joseph. And this is Hedekin with a puck. Second period of action. And the Blues lead the Oilers one to nothing. Hedekin over the line. To pass and oh, and he fans cutting it on the left wing. And play stopped as the goal behind Bill Ranford comes loose. We have seen five minutes, 16 seconds of hockey here in the second period. We talk about Edmonton being very offensive. Hedekin picked up the puck behind his own net and ends up on a three-on-two rush, and that's something that shouldn't happen. He makes the perfect pass to Bass, and Basson tried to get a quick wrist shot off from the left side, and he just fanned on the shot, and the puck trickled wide. But that was a play starting behind his own net and ends up three-on-two. Someone did not do their jobs defensively for the Oilers. You know, talking about Hedekin, only Kelly Chase has played more games than Hedick in this season without getting a goal. Just about everybody else who's played a substantial amount at least has one goal. Here's Luke Richardson tied up by Zombo. Then behind the net, the Oilers throw their weight around, and Basson ends up with a puck. Ahead for Bozon. He's checked. 
finally shoots the puck in. This is Basson with Bozon and Karamnov. Zomnov, or I should say Zombo, and Barron. We could make him a Russian. Out to center ice, Dave Manson. Manson winds up at the blue line and a drive off Zombo's stick wide. Puck cleared out by Barron. And the Blues to center ice. Basson to Zombo. Over to Bozon. Ahead for Karamnov. The pass knocked down. Then Barron or Bozon a shot. And the save by Ranford and the Oilers clear the puck to center ice. Too many bees out there. Boy, there's <laughs> Barron and Bozon and Zombo and Zomnov. <laughs> Whatever happened to White and Waite? <laughs> and they're on together when they come out. Here is Sutter. Sutter over the line. Spun around on the left wing. Manson can't control the puck. Here's Korolev working to the corner. Behind the net to Shanahan. A penalty coming up to the bench. Joseph Shanahan has the puck taken away by Seeger. And there'll be a penalty called here against the Oilers. The Blues lead it on a Brett Hall goal. And this is St. Louis Blues hockey. With the Blues leading 1-0, they'll get another shot on the power play as Ron Sutter carried the puck over the Edmonton blue line. Dave Manson is the Oiler defenseman defending Sutter, puts the stick through the legs, takes him down, and Manson goes off for tripping. And the Blues are 0 for 1 on the power play. They lead it 1 0, and the Oilers win the faceoff and they shoot the puck the length of the ice. The Blues have Brown out there with Hall, Janney, Shanahan, and Miller. Beers is on defense with Bennett. Up front, Maltby, along with Corson for Edmonton, and the Blues are offside at the Edmonton blue line. Kelly Miller, boy, picked up early last season from the Capitals in the Paul Cavallini deal, and I think that's one of a long list of trades that Ron Caron has made that are more than admirable. Now, even though Kelly stayed in Washington, Kevin came over. With Kevin, us. Kevin. <laughs> what about <laughs> Kip? <laughs> Kip is someplace in the minors. He was up with Dallas a little earlier, the third brother, but uh, that has been a great trade. Paul Cavallini going to Washington for Kevin Miller, who had not played very much, and Kevin got off to that great start before having those groin injuries, but now seems to be back to full strength and had a wonderful opportunity to score on a penalty shot the other night in Calgary, which really would have given the Blues a lift, but just shot wide. Blues are on the power play over the line on the right wing. Brown to Kevin Miller. He'll center for Janney in the puck onto the stick of Bob Beers. He finds an opening and sends the puck the length of the ice. 120 to go in the man advantage. We're in the second period. Blues lead at 1 0. Maltby doing some core checking. Blues work to center ice. Here's Miller over the line to Janney. His pass for Hall knocked away. And the shorthanded Oilers move to center ice. This is Doug Waite. He'll go it alone. Backhand shot. And Joseph makes the save. Edmonton is changing. This is Shanahan up the middle of the rink to the blue line. Left wing to Brett Hall. He's in the Edmonton end with Janney and Miller in front of the goal. Back to the point. Shanahan, not a Hall. Back of the goal. Janney leaves the puck for Miller. Near boards to Hall. Hall's out near the blue line, advancing the puck to Janney. 38 seconds to go in the power play. Not a Hall. Right point to Brown. Straight away to Hall. He shoots. He scores. Oh, baby. Brett Hall has a couple here in the second period, and the Blues lead it. Two to nothing in Edmonton. The Blues jumping on the loose puck were able to keep control of the puck in the Oilers zone. And Brett Hall made a, an outstanding play at the point because they want to work it from the right side. So Hall goes all the way over to Brown and then he puts himself back in a position where he can take the shot right off the pass. A perfect pass from Jeff Brown from the boards and Hall just blasted one from well out, no one in front of Bill Ramford. He just beat him cleanly from the blue line. That is number 20 for Brett Hall. He and Shanahan both with 20 goals to lead the team. 7.59 the time of the goal. Brown and Janney assisting. Now Karamov works in. Off the glass and into the crowd and we have seen eight minutes and 13 seconds of action here in a second period that's been very profitable for the Blues, Hall has scored twice. And Karamnov very nearly gave the Blues a 3-0 lead. Dave Manson gave the puck away in the neutral zone. It was bouncing. He just lost it. Karamnov comes in, waits a little too long as his shot was deflected by the defenseman and up over the net, the glass, and into the crowd. 
you think of the fact the Blues recently had a seven game losing streak on the road. If they can win this game tonight, their road record will be almost 500. Eight, nine, and one. That's a darn good road record. <laughs> Anywhere around 500 is outstanding on the road. Here are the Blues working the puck in the Edmonton end. Karamnoff leaves it. It's slapped behind the net by Bozon. And Arnott beats Bass into the puck, and the Oilers clear it out. Now a race back into the St. Louis end. And when Hedekin's in a race, he's going to win it. Then he's checked, knocked down, has the puck covered. And the whistle blows to stop play. Hedekin took quite a bump there when he went back, and he seems to be shaken up just a bit. Well, he put himself in a vulnerable position. He was going to his right and then tried to stop real quick and beat the four-checker. He's a little off balance and then takes a hit. It looks like his right leg came off the ice and was kind of pinned right at the top of the boards where there's a ledge. And that's where he seemed to take the hit. But he's up now on his, on his own power and skating rather slowly to the Blues bench. Well, it's two to nothing. The Blues lead it. And while we have the opportunity, let's remind you day in and day out at home or on the road, you can always count on the great taste of Bud Light. It won't fill you up and never let you down. So make it a Bud Light. Face off in the blue zone. Puck controlled by Olison. Not a beer. Shot right on off the body of Joseph. There'll be a penalty. And it'll be against the Blues. There was some slashing done right in front of Joseph. And I believe... It'll be Murray Barron going off. Now Murray Barron back in the lineup after missing a few games. He's had that recurring groin injury, but he's back tonight, and it gives the Blues some fresh legs in the lineup. You mentioned Zombo didn't play against Calgary, so he's fresh. Barron is fresh as well, and he's trying to cover up in front of the net. The long shot came from the point. Joseph was screened on the play, and he was still able to make the save, and just prior to the shot is when Barron did his slashing routine in front that was the that was the penalty that slash there just prior to that I believe which must have been a couple minutes earlier <laughs> Murray Barron gets the two minute penalty we'll see Edmonton on the power play 849 the time of the penalty Blues lead it two to nothing Brown can't clear it out Beers keeps the puck in advances it into the far corner now Wade at the far point as Rice dumps the puck behind the net for Pearson and then the Blues intercept. Butcher can't get it out. Olison keeps it in to Pearson behind the net. He's held off by Brown. Then wait there. Poke check by Butcher and the puck to Shanahan. He can't clear it out. Olison ties him up. Here's Wait to Beers. Back to Wait at the blue line. Behind the back pass to Olison. Over to Wait. Far circle. It's Beers with a puck. Now Olison moves in. A pass back for Wait comes out to center ice. And the puck deep into the Edmonton end. So the Oilers tonight are 0 for 1 on the power play. Blues lead it 2 to nothing on a pair of Hall goals here in the second period. Wait flips the puck in, goes after it, bumps with Hedekin. That allows Zombo to get it, and he'll lift the puck into the air and will go the length of the ice. Ken, and under a minute to go in the power play. Ken, I was going to say, the Blues just aren't giving the Oilers any time to set up at all in the offensive zone. They're forcing the play in the neutral zone, and Edmonton has to shoot the puck in. Then the Blues are very quick on the puck, and Edmonton just doesn't have time to set up the play. Again, we reiterate, the Oilers are 20th out of 26 on the power play. Arnott, a pass in front for course, and he keeps whacking at the puck, but can't get it by Joseph and the Blues. Bozon clears it the length of the ice. Now Barron will be back in 25 seconds. Edmonton at center ice. Manson flips the puck in. Skating back is Hedekin. He'll drive it off the boards to Shanahan and on to Manson at center ice. Far wing. Manson's pass taken. Oilers work over the line. Now to Manson. Right point. And a shot blocked nicely by Shanahan. Far side to Kravchuk. Now back to Manson to Kravchuk. Screenshot hits Corson. And the penalty is over to Murray Barron. Here's Arnett behind the net, working in front. He's run into the puck loose, goes behind the net again. And here's Seeger for Edmonton, working into the corner. Both teams at full strength, in front for Arnett. And his shot blocked nicely by Miller. This is Shanahan with Miller. Both teams are changing, and the Blues are offside at the Edmonton blue line. Paul has scored twice. The Blues lead the Oilers 2 to nothing in the second period. This is St. Louis Blues hockey.
Well, the Blues killed off another penalty. That is now 24 consecutive shorthanded situations that the Blues have killed off on this road trip. And now 27 straight. The Blues have the best penalty killing in the league. And that doesn't hurt. Not center ice. Brown to Miller along the near boards. He's hit by Beers. And Jeff Brown backhands the puck in. Brown and Butcher, Janney, Miller, and Hull for the Blues. Olison just has to flip the puck out of his zone. Brown at his own blue line. A pass behind Miller. The puck will carry the length of the ice. Bob Beers touches it. And an icing call against the Blues, who are trying to end this six-game road trip with a victory here in Edmonton that would make it a 3-3 trip as they head home for four in a row. Boy, things just turned around after the second period in San Jose this past week, and the Blues have played very stellar hockey ever since. And Ron Caron joined the team in Calgary for the game. In fact, he was going to have a team meeting the night before the Calgary game, and we talked about how the Blues had to come to Edmonton and spend the night here, but he did have his meeting last night with his team, and what he talked about was defensive zone coverage, and he left it open to discussion with the players. They've done a good job tonight. Manson from the right point, a hard shot. Joseph a stick save, clearing the puck up to Korolev, who is on with Sutter and Shanahan. Korolev deep in his own end. He's going to try to go from one end of the country to the other, and he gets poke checked. And Butcher will have to go back deep, bringing the puck around the boards, and Sutter tips it out. This is Dave Manson back for Edmonton. He loses the puck, gets centered. Oh, and a shot by Shanahan, knocked away. Run, Sutter! And a little wrist shot goes wide, and the puck ends up on the mesh behind Bill Ranford, and play stopped with 7.54 left in the second period. Now, Dave Manson has had a difficult time in this second period. He lost the puck earlier in the period in the neutral zone, and this time has good control. He goes to make the pass and almost just fans on the pass. Jeff Brown walking in on the play, sets up Shanahan, who was able to get a quick shot off. That was blocked, and then Ron Sutter just missed to the glove side with a quick wrist shot. Montgomery is on with Chase and Prokhorov, and the puck at the Blues defense, Crossman to Hedekin. And a pass too far on the right wing for Prokhorov. He catches up, trying to cut in. He's in alone. He shoots. He scores. Whoa. Vitaly Prokhorov. There is speed, folks. Cutting in, catching up with a pass, and beating Bill Ranford. And Prokhorov with a brilliant goal to make it three to nothing. And what happened on the play? The Blues just fired the puck all the way across. Now Igor Kravchuk is the left defenseman for Edmonton. He cheated way to the middle of the ice. And Prokhorov, with all that room and speed, is able to cut in. And by the time Kravchuk, number 21, gets back in the play, Prokhorov had already cut to the net. Ranford went down, and what a shot right over the top of the shoulder to make it 3 nothing Blues. And that's a pair of goals for Prokhorov now in four games. And the Blues to center ice, leading it 3 to nothing. They give the puck up. Oilers in possession. It'll be Beers taking it back deep in his own end, pursued by Karamnov. Great play by Karamnov, and then the Oilers cover up. Here's Seeger. Just passing it to center ice and Crossman at the Blues line. Now to Hedekin, right below us. He'll fire the puck in, far corner off the glass. Ranford clears it up the left wing to Shane Corson. Hedekin and Crossman assisting on the Prokhorov goal. Oilers work in. Here's Arnott in front. A chance for Olison. Joseph way out, and Olison slammed to the boards by Barron behind the net. Blues can't clear. Rice a shot knocked down. Sutter ahead to Karamnov. He's got a breakaway. Karamnov in. Fake shoots. And Ranford takes a pad save on Karamnov as the Oilers clear to center ice. And Zombo dumps the puck back in. Blues up three to nothing. And the Oilers clear through center ice. And here's Barron back in his own end. And yes, the Russians are beginning to adapt a little better and get more ice time and play better. Zombo is crunched against the far boards by Thornton. Here are the Oilers. This is Thornton in front of all the backhand shot. Hit the side of the net. Right point. Manson a shot. And that goes wide. And here's Miller clearing the puck ahead. Thornton ends up with it at center ice. It slides off his stick. Janney can't work in as a sweep check by Manson knocks the puck away. Up to young Peter White. White 
Up at the end of November from the American League. Now to Manson over the line. Here's Thornton. Back to Manson. A shot off the arm of Joseph. Oh, and the puck ends up on the top of the net. And play stopped by referee Terry Gregson. Down to 544 to go in the second period. It's 3-0 St. Louis. Well, from time to time, we check NHL leaders. And this is how the Blues point leaders round out now. Hall leading the way with 42 points, including 20 goals. Shanahan second in scoring. He has 40 points, 20 goals, 20 assists. Then Janney with 37 points, Brown with 30, and Miller with 26 points. Our leaders brought to you by the United States Postal Service. We deliver for you. And Fred Hall has just been flying tonight, as have some of the other Blues forwards. The Blues defense are doing a good job knowing that the Oilers defensemen are going to take a lot of chances. They're just dumping the puck off the boards. From the faceoff, Manson at the point of low shot. Joseph a stick save. Shanahan clears the puck out. Luke Richardson slides it near side to Manson. He'll drill it in wide of the net. Digging after it, DeBrus, and he whacks the puck wide. Now trying to work in front and taking a shot is Viewtech, and that's batted away. Buckberger leaves it for Viewtech behind the net. He's well covered. Good play by Korolev, and Viewtech gets the puck back to have it swept away by Brown, but not out. Richardson to Viewtech behind the Blues net in front, and the puck knocked away from Buckberger. Then Manson a shot, gloved down by Brown, who clears the puck out. Blues are changing. This is Manson, far wing to Viewtech. He shoots the puck in. We're down to five minutes to go. In the second period, Blues lead it three to nothing. Ball is scored twice. Prokhorov has a goal. Pass at center ice for Korolev. He's checked. Then Montgomery trying to work in. He's held off. One hand shot stopped. And the Oilers clear to center ice. Here's Doug Crossman with his eighth NHL team firing the puck into the corner. Adam Bennett back. Trying to get away from Montgomery. Montgomery covers him well with Chase. Centering pass to Flex to the blue line. And Hedekin's drive wide. Puck in front off the inboards. And Prokhorov can't get a shot. He leaves the puck in the corner. Kelly Chase has it. Sends it in front of the net. And Igor Kravchuk intercepts. Kravchuk, the ex-Blackhawk, over the St. Louis line. And a shot wide off Hedekin. Crossman takes possession. Flips the puck ahead out of the reach of Chase. Kravchuk then hands it to Bassett. His pass to Chase. He can't work in. And Beers leads the run. Ahead to Stephen Rice. Over the line. He's checked. And then knocked down on the play is Doug Waite. And Kelly Chase will pick up a penalty. 3.58 to go in the second period in Edmonton. Blues three. Oilers no score. And this is St. Louis Blues. Lisa's great, but there's something about Sharon. Sharon's okay, but Lisa, whew, what a knockout. Why is the grass always greener on the other side? You lucky dog. Lucky dog. Why ask why? Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste. Bud Dry. It's one thing. Mm, nice. That's beyond question. Kelly Chase was out at the end of a long shift and coming back on the play to try and help out. He gets his stick on. Doug Waite pulls him down and Chase goes off and Edmonton goes on the power play. In this period, the Blues have been outshot 12-8. Yet they have three goals in the period. Edmonton is 0 for 2 on the power play tonight. The faceoff just inside the St. Louis blue line. Basson unable to win it. Olison flips the puck ahead and it goes over the glass. And into the crowd is Corson. Is on with Seeger and Arnott. Beers and Olison on the Edmonton power play. The Blues killing the penalty with Basson and Bozon, Brown and Butcher. Now again, even though the Blues have been outshot in this period 12 to 8, there's no question that the Blues have had the much better scoring chances in this period. Quite a few of the Edmonton shots have come from their defense from the blue line. Buck shot behind the Blues net. Joseph gloves it, leaves it for Butcher. He drives it around off Beers, who keeps it in nicely. Now back to Beers at the far point. Little pass in front, out of the reach of his teammates. This is Seeger, the former New Jersey Devil, to the right point. Pulls in a drive, and that's stopped, and Basson clears the puck out. I believe that shot did get through and hit the pad of Joseph. Here come the Oilers again. Over the line, Seeger taking the puck, but it's offside. 
And there's a minute 25 remaining in the Edmonton power play and 323 to go in this second period. And Frederick Olison is a recent addition to this Edmonton team. He was picked up from Winnipeg and for the prime reason really of, of, of playing the power play. He's a very offensive defenseman. He has great skills. Has never been known for his defensive play, even though Glenn Sather has mentioned he has played pretty well. But on the power play, he shoots the puck very well. And with Corson in front of the net, any chance Olison gets to shoot it, he'll take the shot. The faceoff out near the center red line. Blues up three to nothing. Oilers gain possession. Here's Olison trying to work in. He does around Miller in the pass. Broken up. Butcher clears the puck out. Miller after it inside the Edmonton blue line. Miller along the boards as Olison steal the puck. Here's Seeger playing the puck on the far wing. The Beers not a course and he'll dump it in. Arnett after it, but Joseph out. He clears it by Beers to center ice. And Olison back in his own end for Edmonton. 55 seconds until Kelly Chase is back. The Blues are shorthanded. Gorson backhands the puck in. Joseph loves to handle the puck. Get out of the crease and he clears to center ice. Manson weaving back in his own end. Gives the puck to Bennett. Up to Wade at the red line. Both teams changing. This is Doug Wade with Rice and Corson in front for Corson out of his reach with Manson a shot and that's blocked by Basson who hobbles to center ice. Basson takes a shot and ran for the pad save and waits back the other way with Rice and Corson three on three drop pass back for Corson a shot and they score the puck knocked down in front and Rice tips it over Joseph. Stephen Rice a power play goal and the Oilers cut the Blues' lead to 3-1. to one. Well, the Blues were actually a man short because Basson was limping back to the bench from the other end. And the first shot is actually blocked by Zombo. And Stephen Rice just reaching out at the same time Curtis Joseph is reaching out with his stick. Their sticks come together. The puck is in between. And the puck ends up just going straight up in the air over the head of Curtis Joseph, who was down on his knees and into the net. Zombo with the initial deflection of the puck, and then Curtis actually went to poke check the puck, and Rice was there at the same time. The puck deflects up high over Joseph, and it's 3-1 Blues. Just over two minutes to go. In the second period, the Blues back at full strength with the puck. Here's Broker off in his own end, giving it back to Zombo up to Hall. He'll clear it out. And the Oilers in their own end now. Near wing for Rice, too far. This is Barrett. Ahead for Hall, not a Janney. Back to Hall, he's well covered. Still able to shoot the puck in. Oilers deep in their own zone. Broker off doing some good four checking. Now behind the net to Janney. He's smothered by Wade. Oilers can't clear. Zombo a shot. And that drive from the right point wide. And Rice clears the puck out into the Blues end. Hall takes a pass from Zombo. Drives the puck off the far boards to Janney. Janney with a bouncing puck ahead to Barron. He'll shoot it in. It goes off of Maltby right to Ran uh, Ranford. And he clears to center ice. And Janney shoots the puck right back in. 112 to go. Here in the period, the Oilers a bit sloppy in their own end. Here's Shanahan centering off Ranford. And Beers clears to the corner. Shanahan centers again, and the Oilers work out. Up the far wing, Crabchuck, his pass. And Sutter takes over to Hedekin. He flips the puck to the Oilers' defense. This is Igor Kravchuk. Blues lead it 3-1. His pass behind Thornton. Crossman right wing to Sutter. And his feed to Shanahan tipped to center ice. Blues dump the puck in. That Rice goal, a power play at 17-47 from Corson and DeBrusk. Puck shot in by Peter White. And right to Joseph, who grabs on to stop play with 35 seconds to go here in this second period. 3-1, Blues lead it. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. In the heat of the night, weeknights at 11 on St. Louis 11. Now with the Blues leading this game 3-1 with 34 seconds to go in regulation time, I think probably the best way to describe this game, Ken, 
is that Bob Barry's team has played a very smart, intelligent game. They haven't done anything foolish. They've made the simple plays when they couldn't make the pass. They've been going off the glass, out of their zone, catching some of the other defensemen in close. That has created some scoring chances for them. In the neutral zone, they've done a good job forcing Edmonton to dump the puck in. Curtis Joseph has handled the puck pretty well for the most part, and really it's been their game for, for, for the most part. Basson wins the faceoff. Butcher in the corner. Gets it ahead, and Montgomery clears it out. We're very late in the second period. The first period was scoreless. Hall has scored twice. Broke her off once here in the middle period. Manson in his own end. Over to Luke Richardson. Back to Dave Manson. Manson into the center circle. Shoots one in from well out. And the save by Joseph. Seeger tries to center and does. No one there for the Oilers. Five seconds to go in the period. Bozon clears to center ice. Here's Richardson shooting it in. Right on goal. Joseph makes the save. And that is the end of the second period. Shots on goal after 40 minutes. The Oilers 28 and the Blues 21. Hall and Prokhorov get goals. Hall is 19th and 20th. Prokhorov is second. And then Edmonton gets a goal late in the period as Rice gets it at 1747. After two periods at the Northlands Coliseum, it's the Blues three and the Oilers one. You heard about this tax bill thing, huh? <laughs> you know what would be great? A home equity loan from Boatman's. Oh, yeah, you can use the money for uh, anything you want, and the interest is uh, usually tax deductible. The rates are real low, too, Lorraine. Hey, why don't you tell your son-in-law he can get a home equity loan, send the kids to college, it'll be great. You got any flippers? No flipper, it's got snorkel. You've been out here a long time, haven't you? Want me to tip you over? We'll have in a little bit, but we want to tell you about the holiday package this year, this is the last time to order it. This is the perfect Christmas gift for any Blues fan. You can receive two tickets to either the Blues versus Calgary on January 2nd or the January 13th game against Edmonton. Number one item is the Blues workout suit. These are all $70. It's the sweat pants and sweat bottoms. Number two, a Blues kid fun pack. Includes uh, two Blues mini hockey sticks, a Brett Hall action figure, an official Blues hockey puck, and a Blues mini pennant. And number three, a short sleeve sweatshirt and Blues cap. You can call 1-800-BLUES-16. Operators are on by standing now, and the, not too late. We'll get them out to you, and uh, maybe I can get you that for Christmas, Rick. Which yeah, would you I, like? I doubt the little one. I think it probably fed me. Yeah. <laughs> well, big one here, obviously, is the Blues lead at 3-1. to one. We're going to go upstairs to Ken and Joe for and some more highlights and some nice ones on the Blues' behalf. Yeah, three goals, and Bruce, I want to congratulate you. I'm going to find a way for you to get an Emmy for being able to ad-lib that <laughs> copy so well. I ad-libbed it earlier. We've got about five pieces of copy around here. Around some place. Like to ad -lib. That was a good job, though, and it is a good offer. Three goals for the Blues, a late goal for Edmonton, and, well, Brett Hall, two big goals to really give the Blues a jump. Yeah, and the first goal was started, actually, by Garth Butcher making a good defensive play. He just moves up into the neutral zone. Carson had control of the puck, or Corson, I should say. He just deflects the puck over to Janney. Now watch Janney looking for Hall all the way. Miller is there taking one player out. Hall all alone on the other side, and the one good pass, the quick shot by Hull, and it's one nothing for St. Louis. And the Blues will get a power play goal. Hull again. Hull makes a great play, getting it over to the right side, and then putting himself back in position to get the puck and get the shot off right off the pass. Brown with the perfect pass. Hull with the long shot beats Ranford cleanly. Broker off, equaling speed. Kraftchuk out of position, the left defenseman, and he just picked up the loose puck. Prokhorov able to move in, and as Ranford went down, shot the puck over his left shoulder, and that made it 3 nothing. For the first time on the trip, the Blues give up a goal shorthanded. Yeah, Bob Basson was late getting back into the play. He was actually going to the bench. Now, Curtis Joseph tried to poke-check the puck. Stephen Rice and 
Joseph sticks came together at the same time. The puck just deflected up over the top of Curtis Joseph, and that made it 3-1. Hall from Janney and Butcher at 248. Hall again from Brown and Janney, the power play goal. Prokhorov with assists to Hedekin and Crossman at 12-22. Then the power play goal for the Oilers. They have changed the assists. They now go to Corson and Wright. I should say wait. Rice gets the goal at 17:47. The period summary is brought to you by Discover Card, the card with the big payback. Well, the two teams will be back on shortly for the third period. The Blues enjoying a two-goal lead. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. If you're into the blues, here's some news that'll stop you in your tracks. Now a trip to the arena can get you a free ride on the Alton Bell Casino. Here it comes, the new Alton Bell Blues Breakaway Card. It's your ticket for as many as four fun-filled free rides on the Alton Bell. Use it four times, and your name will be entered in a drawing to win two free tickets to the Stanley Cup playoffs. So enjoy blues hockey and have a ball on the Alton Bell Casino. Get the breakaway card. It's a smash. I don't care how much money you make, no one wants to pay more than they have to for anything. So before you buy a car, truck, or van, see my friend Johnny Londoff. Because Johnny owns his building and lot and pays for most of his inventory, he doesn't have to charge you an average of $549 that other dealers must add to their costs. This is if Johnny's buying his cars, trucks, and vans for $549 less from Chevrolet. That's the Johnny Londoff competitive advantage. Johnny Landoff Chevrolet. Now, Vitaly Prokhorov certainly happy to be back and on the bus ride yesterday from Calgary up here to Edmonton. He had a big smile on his face. His family's back in St. Louis and he has been another one of those players that has stepped up and contributed, scored a big goal in Calgary and then of course getting the third goal tonight for the Blues. You know, Ken, we talked about the Edmonton Oilers out shooting the Blues 28 to 21 at this point. We also were talking about the number of shots that the Oilers defensemen were taking. Up to this point, 15 of their 28 shots, over half of their shots, have come from their defensemen. And in that period, Dave Manson had five shots on goal on goaltender Curtis Joseph. Tells quite a story. Not nearly the scoring chances that we've seen in, in earlier games where they've come from close in on rebounds, on tips, and that type of thing. I thought Rick Mahar made a good point talking about the Blues defense clearing out in front of the net. The Blues forwards coming back to help out in their own zone. And the Oilers defenseman just simply trying to throw the puck at the net. And most of those shots have been relatively harmless. And the third period begins with both teams at full strength. Then Shanahan shoots the puck in for the Blues right on goal. Ran for the save. Sliding the puck up on the wing, and Arnett clears it out. And skating back in his own zone is Brown. Brown is on with Butcher. Looks for Korolev up the near side. Oh, and he deflects the puck, and it hits the linesman right in front of the Blues bench below us. The veteran linesman, Ray Scampanello, and he just simply could not get out of the way quickly enough. Well, Jeff Brown really put a lot of mustard on his pass, and the puck just deflected off the Blues player right off the stick. And Scapanello right on the boards as Shanahan, or I should say Korolev, just tried to deflect the puck out of the zone. Scapanello just in front of the Blues bench, caught the puck, I believe, in the right hand. And trainer Tom Nash now trying to help out with Ray Scapanello. Probably got the hand up in time to maybe stave off further danger. On our Bush out of town scoreboard, Dallas winning at Vancouver 3 1. Quebec at home beats the Sharks 7 5. In the third at Pittsburgh, the Islanders lead the Penguins 4 2. Tampa Bay and Buffalo a 3 3 final. The Rangers at home holding on a one goal lead over Ottawa. New Jersey leads Philadelphia by a goal in the third. Boston a winner at Florida in overtime 2 1. And Anaheim at Chicago. That's no score in the second period. And boy, is that Anaheim club playing well. Not giving up many goals, are they? Not at all. And the Blues trying to work out. Puck comes to center ice. It's loose in front of the Edmonton bench. And Beers back in his own zone. Clears it out. Korolev shoots the puck back in. And it's an offside, but a delayed call. And the Oilers clear the zone. Now the puck back in front of Joseph. It's Brown playing it ahead to Sutter. Not a Korolev to Sutter. And he'll flip it in far corner. After it is Shanahan, but Beers beats him to it, hands it to Korolev. He runs into Shanahan. From the point, a shot by Hedekin wide. 
Then Janney in the corner loses the puck. Olison plays it ahead. And the Oilers move to center ice. They have a three on two. Seeger with a puck over the line. Gets it to Olison. And then a drive after the puck is deflected. And the shot goes high and out to center ice by Peter White. Blues get to center ice. Shanahan shoots the puck in. Ranford plays it far corner. And it's White back to play it for Edmonton. Up to Scott Thornton. He's checked, but then Manson feeds left wing for Thornton. He's slowed up by Cross, but in the puck in the corner. Taken by Hall. He works dangerously in front of Joseph. Avoids a multi check. Headmans to Miller up the far left wing. Then he's poke checked by Manson. Back the other way. Young Kurt Maltby, a second year pro, can't get around the defense. Then wide a shot blocked in front of Joseph by Crossman, who slaps the puck to center ice beyond the reach of Janney. Manson back as the Blues are changing. Far side to Maltby. He'll wind it up, smash the puck in around behind the Blues net and all the way to center ice. And now back into the Edmonton end, and both clubs are changing on the fly. Blues lead it 3-1 early in the third period. Karamnov checked. The Oilers can't get the puck out. Karamnov can't get to it, and it's played by Kravchuk from right in front of the Oilers' net. Not out. Zombo a pass in front, intercepted. It's Bennett ahead to Wade. Wade on the left wing into the blue zone, goes behind the net. He centers into the slot. Bennett a backhander. And it trickles wide, and Zombo slaps the puck to center ice. The Blues are changing again. Long Kravchuk pass ends up on the stick of weight. Now to Bennett. He'll circle back at the Edmonton blue line. Coming up to the three-minute mark in the third period to Kravchuk. Right wing for Rice. And he gets hit by Bozon. Then Barron in his own end to Zombo. Zombo's in trouble. Takes a shoulder from Rice. And Montgomery starts out the rookie. About 5'9", 170. He'll fire the puck in, and Ranford controls it, leaving it in the corner for Louis DeBrusque. He's checked. Then trying to get it out is Biutek, and he does, getting it over to Kravchuk. Long shot. Joseph the save. Brown the rebound. He hits Biutek with a puck. And the Oilers trying to get some control here. DeBrusque can't center, and this is Kelly Chase along the near wing to the red line. Ahead out of the reach of Prokhorov. And Beers takes possession behind his net for Edmonton. He's got some skating room to the red line. Bob Beers shoots the puck in. It comes right in front out of the corner. Joseph corrals it, leaving the puck for Butcher. Then to Korolev and his pass for Prokhorov at center ice, intercepted by Beers. Coming up to the four-minute mark. Prokhorov intercepts to Korolev, over the line to Sutter. In front to Prokhorov, and a backhander is blocked by Beers. Who ties up Korolev, and the Oilers start out, led by Shane Corson. Corson on the left wing over the blue line, and he takes a shot wide. He was played nicely by Crossman. Buckberger trying to keep the puck in, does. It goes behind the net. Corson ties up Crossman. Arnott trying to center, can't against Hedekin. And Sutter getting the puck up the board. Shanahan can't get it out. Manson, a shot! And it trickles just wide. Here's Buckberger behind the Blues net. Puck goes to the far boards. Korolev there, and he'll fire at the length of the ice to relieve the pressure. Manson, or I should say Ranford, has to play it. Out of the reach of Manson to center ice. Hedekin gets it. Then he loses it, gets it right back, slaps it ahead, and Hall works in. He stops to avoid Manson. Here's Ranford clearing up the boards. Hall intercepts. Hall with a puck. Hall flips it in front of the Oilers' net. No one there, and this is Dave Manson. Bad pass. Janney intercepts a feed for Hall too far. Then Zdeno Seeger into the middle to Jason Arnott ahead for Corson too far. It'll be icing back to touch the puck. Zombo and an icing call against the Oilers. 14.51 to go in the third period. The Blues three, the Oilers one, and this is St. Louis Blues hockey. 14.51 to go in the third. The Blues are leading this 3-1. to one. one of the linesmen's whistles misfired. They've gone to get a new whistle, so that's going to be a bit of a delay. I, during the last intermission, praised Bruce Affleck for ad libbing uh, information about the Blues' great holiday fun pack. I found out he had copy in front of him and was doing that from the black and white script, so I no longer can offer him my 
aid in receiving a, an Emmy or any other praise and award. So, Bruce, you didn't do that good a job after all. <laughs> <laughs> Having a little trouble with the reading, are we? <laughs> it's been one of those nights. You know, I almost get the idea that we're up in the cold tundra on a Sunday night, small crowd, and maybe at the end of a road trip. There's a lot of things frozen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ray Scapanello is back with a new whistle. Obviously, Tom Nash fixed his hand, but not his whistle. Now the face-off, Janney knocked off balance. The puck played back to the point in front of Hull. A little shot flops wide as Zombo set him up in the slot. Oilers, Arnott, to center ice to Kravchuk. Over the line with Gorson. And the shot wide off Zombo. Blues can't clear. Seeger keeps it in. He'll shoot. Oh, that hits fair, and he's down. He's really hurt. Now the Blues at center ice. Blues work in Janney to Miller. Barron hasn't moved. Miller in the corner behind the net to Hall in front for Janney. And the puck knocked away, and Murray Barron is really in pain. Here comes Tom Nash out. He took a wicked shot. Looked like on the ankle, and he's just back from a groin injury, and whoo, that hurts. Well, Sedano Seeger just walked into that shot, and Murray Barron was right in the line of fire as he took it off the ankle. Seeger took the shot, and Murray Barron was there, takes it off the ankle, or maybe the left knee. Yeah, I'm beginning to think the knee as we saw it there. I thought it had been the uh, left leg. Apparently, it was the knee which, uh, as you know, Joe, can sometimes be more painful if you get it in a spot that uh, doesn't have the real good coverage in the padding. Well, Barron was a little bit out on an angle, so he had his left leg turned sideways somewhat. There's not a lot of padding on the side of the knees, and it looked like that's where he took that shot. But it was a, a good play then after that by the Blues and by the referee Terry Gregson because he could have blown the whistle right away but because the Blues had a scoring chance Gregson let the play go on until Edmonton touched the puck and now finally Murray Barron back on his feet and being helped to the Blues bench. Not only was that a long way from the ankle it might not have even been the knee. It might have been higher than that. The thigh. And I'm beginning to all the more understand the pain. Uh huh. It's, it's the limp I'm confused with. Yeah. And the faceoff outside the Edmonton blue line. The Blues lead it 3-1. to one. They have been outshot 31-21 by the Oilers. The Oilers coming in with a three-game winning streak. The Blues trying to extend their winning streak to three. Basson is out there now with Bozon and Karamnov. Brown and Butcher. And they're ready to drop the puck. Corson and Basson. And Basson slides the puck to the red line. Butcher over to Brown. He'll drive it in around behind the Oilers' net. Here's Karamnoff. Check. Gets away, though, from Kravchuk. Not a Bozon behind the net. Wrapping it around in front. Oh, and then Karamnoff runs into Ranford. He got bumped a bit. And the Oilers, Kravchuk through center ice for Arnott. Blocked. Good defensive play by Bozon. And back the other way, Basson. Basson. Leaves the puck behind the net now as he was well covered. Then in the corner, Karamnov intercepts only to be checked off the puck. At center ice, Seeger to Corson, not to Arnott. It's 7, 8, and 9 on the forward line for Edmonton. And then Arnott a shot and a stick save Joseph. Seeger a drive off Brown and the puck gets in front to Bozon. Up to Karamnov and he'll dump it to the Edmonton blue line. Both teams are changing. 13 and a half minutes to go. Puck shot in, right on goal. Joseph, an easy save. Brown clears the puck up the boards, out to center ice. Here's Doug Waite. Waite sends it back to Beers. At the early blue line, not Olison. He hands it away to Montgomery. Three on three. Montgomery, a soft shot, and a save by Ranford. Olison kicks the puck up the far boards to Waite. He's on the move at center ice. The defenseman, Bob Beers, in over the line, back for Waite. Batted away by Hedekin, then a shot by Beers, a save. Joseph, for a moment, doesn't see the puck, and then grabs it in his trapper to gain a whistle. Seven minutes have gone by in the scoreless third. The Blues up 3-1. to one. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. You want a Boltman's home equity loan, Hal. The rates are low. The interest is usually tax deductible. You can use the money to finance anything, you know, home improvements, college, a bigger mower. <laughs> hey, it makes sense, Hal. Well, anyway, listen, I'm going to go talk to your neighbor, Bobby, about a home equity loan from Boltman's. Bye, Hal. Love your work. You can run, but you can't hide, Hal, from the Boltman's guy. 
Well, Edmonton came very close to getting within a goal of the Blues. A shot by Bob Beers. An innocent-looking wrist shot that Joseph had a little trouble with. Lost sight of it. He thought it was going behind him. The puck was actually in front of him, lying in the crease before he was able to locate the puck and then cover up. Now the face-off near Joseph. Hedekin has trouble, gets hit by Buckberger, and then comes back. Gets it up the wing, and Shanahan clears the puck out. The Oilers at center ice. Unable to control the puck, and this is Crossman at his own line. He makes a poor pass, and the puck goes deep into the Oilers' end. No icing. Ranford back to play it into the corner to Beers. He can't find it. And Buckberger back to help out. Back to Beers. Now the Blues do some good forechecking. Crossman pinches in, breaks up the play. And then the check at center ice for Utec. Checked by Korolev and Beers back in his own end. Beers from behind the goal, up the middle of the rink. Now to the red line, shoots the puck in. Joseph out of the crease to leave it behind the net, decides to kick it up the boards. Buckberger is there, takes a hit from Butcher. Oilers trying to center. DeBrusque unable to. Finally, it comes in front, and Miller clears the puck out. The Oilers with six shots on goal in this period. The Blues have had two. Neither team has scored, and we're under 12 minutes to go. In the third period, the Blues lead it 3-1. to one. Manson left wing feet out of the reach of Thornton. Joseph plays the puck around far side all the way to center ice. And the Oilers in control at the red line. Former Maple Leaf Luke Richardson fires the puck in far corner. Brown plays it. It comes to the point. Manson a shot. It hits Janney. Janney breaks around the defense. He's got Hall heading for the net. A pass to Hall. He shoots. He scores. Brad Hall has the hat trick. What a feed by Janney. Number 16, the hat trick. It's been a while. And oh, baby, what a night tonight here in Edmonton for the Blues captain, Brett Hall, and the Blues take the lead four to one. Well, Jeff Brown tried to clear the puck out of his own zone and ended up on the stick of Manson. He took the shot, but Janney blocked the shot and then was able to just continue on. Brett Hall with a burst of speed from the neutral zone just took off for the net. The perfect feed from Janney on the left side to Hall breaking on the right side. Hall wasted no time at all as he let go a quick wrist shot. Ranford did not have a chance, and the hat trick for Hall makes it 4-1 Blues. Hall with goals 19, 20, and 21. Janney has assisted on each. This one at 8.34. Janney gets the only assist. Now an equipment repair. Terry Roof, the roofer, the Blues outstanding equipment man, is out to make the repair on Curtis Joseph. The Blues with 11.26 to go in the third period, leading the Oilers now by a score of 4-1. to one. The crowd here tonight, 13,628, which is uh, bigger than a lot of the turnouts they have these days here in Edmonton. Well, and what a game for Brett Hall tonight. We talked about his three shots in the first period that he could have easily scored on a few of them, but Janney with the great play defensively and then the perfect feed, and Hall with those great hands, those strong hands, and actually from... Not a great angle, and the puck was out in front of him a little bit, but those hands are so strong that he's able to get a quick shot off and lift it over Ranford for his third goal of the night. Now the Oilers lose the puck at center ice, get it back. Kravchuk winds up, long shot, and Joseph to save. Janney now, by the way, has 29 assists in 32 games. And that was a sweetheart of a pass. Corson at center ice gives the puck to Adam Bennett. He'll shoot it in. We're down to 11 minutes to go. The Blues with a three-goal lead here in the third period in Edmonton. This is Bassett flipping the puck ahead. And Brown knocks it to center ice. Karamnov takes it. And finally, it's shot in by the Blues. Korolev after it. Or rather, Bassett. Corson beats him to it. Slides the puck up the right wing. Arnett a pass as Seeger gets away. Then Kravchuk advances the puck at center ice. And Crossman flips it to the... Oilers defense. Bennett's speed too far. Then Hedekin shoots the puck right back to Bennett, who takes a hit from Montgomery on to Corson at the red line. To Jason Arnott over the line to Seeger. Not a Corson. Far circle. A shot. And that goes wide. Blues up four to one. Blues try to clear the puck out. Can't. Kept in. In front is Corson. The pass to him broken up by Crossman. Blues can't clear it out. Beers keeps the puck in. Hedekin in the corner. Hedekin checked by Corson. 
He gets some help from Crossman. Oh, then Crossman gets a heavy bump from Arnott. The Blues still can't get the puck out. Kravchuk keeps it in to Seeger. Ahead along the boards, it comes loose. Crossman clears it. Up at center ice to Montgomery. Two on two to Prokhorov. Prokhorov drops the puck for Chase, and it's batted away. Seeger tries to clear it out. Can't. Hedekin keeps it in, shoots it around behind the Edmonton net. And the Oilers take over. Here is Igor Kravchuk. Both teams are changing. In the middle to wait. He is spun around by Prokhorov. And the Blues will carry it in. Here's Sutter. And the puck swept away by Beers behind the net. Korolev centering. And the puck knocked to center ice by Stephen Rice. It'll slide all the way back to Joseph. Blues lead the Oilers 4-1. to one. Brown a pass off Korolev's skate. Nicely to Shanahan. A long drive from center ice. Stopped by Ranford. Beers in his own end. And the Oilers clear it out. Just over nine minutes to go. The Blues trying to head home with a three-game winning streak. Blues clear to center ice, and Janney has the puck handed to him by Richardson, but can't work in. This is Scott Pearson. Pearson over the line, bumped by Crossman, and the puck cleared out by Hall. This is Manson for Edmonton, right in front of his net, and he'll circle and stop behind the goal. Feeding it up the right wing, Oilers can't get out. Hall, a long shot from the blue line, knocked away. And the Oilers work it out. Richardson to wait. Wait with Rice and Pearson over the line. Wait on the right wing. Trying to get around cross, but nice poke check. He centers. Oh, and Miller back defensively in a strong fashion to intercept. And the puck cleared out by Janney. At center ice, long shot by Richardson to flex wide. And the Oilers and Blues are changing. Here's Hedekin across the ice in his own territory to Crossman. He'll just clear to the red line. Kravchuk flips the puck in. It's caught waist high by Joseph. Hedekin behind the net up the near wing for Vitaly Karamnov. On with Basson. Flip pass to Basson at the blue line. A shot, and he doesn't miss by much. And the puck brought out by Vladimir Biutek, the 21-year-old Czech. He's over the line. Puck knocked away by Bozon, but on to Bookberger. Sticky waits. He shoots. And a save by Joseph. He throws out the trapper. And the Blues clear to center ice. Karamnov after the puck, trying to steal it from Kravchuk, can't, and Bennett steps up to take the puck. Can't get it out, Montgomery steals, heads for the net, oh, and he's poke checked by Kravchuk. And Montgomery loses his balance. Here's Karamnov in the near right wing circle into the slot, a shot, the save, and the puck trickles wide of the near post. And the Oilers take possession. Played by Biutek to center ice to Bookberger. Both teams are changing, Bookberger checked by Bozon. 7-12 to go. Puck near the Blues net. Zombo to Bozon at center ice, and he turns it over to Bob Beers. Non-stop action here in Edmonton. Beers over the line. A wrist shot. Oh, what a save by Joseph. He does the splits to Rob Beers. Blues can't get the puck out of first try, due on the second effort. And the Oilers take it at center ice. Frederick Olison across the rink to Bob Beers. Blues are changing. They lead 4-1. to one. Oilers shoot the puck in, and Butcher plays it off the near boards to Sutter. He's checked by Arnott. And it's Ron Sutter near his net, stopping up the near side to Chase. He ties up Olison and the Blues at center ice, Brown. And he'll just shoot the puck in and go to the bench. Good forechecking by Prokhorov. Prokhorov steals the puck from Beers. Nice pass to the point to Hedekin. Near point to Butcher, a shot. And it goes wide off Arnott. Ranford clears the puck up to Seeger. In the middle. To Olofsson, he loses his balance, gets up, a pass ahead to Corson over the Blues line on the right wing. He's stopped by Butcher. Then Arnott runs into the corner, loose puck, Seeger behind the net in front, and a backhander by Arnott, stopped by Joseph. What a save by Joseph, then Sutter and Arnott in a stick-swinging duel that's broken up as the puck ends up behind the Edmonton net. Non-stop action, Manson to center ice, Blues lead it 4-1. to one. Manson will shoot the puck in. Back in the corner is Shanahan. Can't clear it out. Manson in front to Doug Wade. Oh, the save on Wade and the rebound wide. And Pearson a drive. And Joseph stops that and smothers the puck to stop the action with 5.38 remaining in the third period. And the Blues leading the Oilers 4-1. to This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Well, it's been a while for Brett Hull. All of last season, this season, I believe we go back to March 2nd of 1992 since Brett Hull 
has had a hat trick. And Joe, as you are known affectionately around the league as the Blues official historian, we believe that that was when he had his last hat trick. But the hat trick tonight for Brett Hall is 18th. He's been brilliant. Blues lead at 4-1. Here's Richardson in the Blues end from the faceoff behind the net. Comes in front and a shot rejected. Richardson again. Centers through the slot. No one there for Edmonton. And it is Butcher ahead to Sutter. He flips the puck ahead by Rice. Into the corner, Manson. Korolev gives him a check. Pass ahead on the near wing to Pearson. Not a dug weight. Right wing feed for Rice. Knocked away by Brown. And here's Shanahan. He avoids a check and flips the puck in. 5.05 to go, folks. Blues have a 4-1 lead here in Edmonton. Trying to head home with a three-game winning streak. They'll play Tampa Bay on Thursday night. Long shot to save. Brown can't clear. Manson trying to work in. He's checked. And Vitaly Proker off with a puck. Clears to chase at center ice. He has it skip away, and this is Kravchuk. Ahead to Rice, and as he heads to the bench, he'll backhand the puck in. And the Oilers changing on the fly. Crossman gets it up on the far wing. Prokhorov clears the zone. The Oilers carry it back in. Maltby to Thornton, and he's stopped in a loose puck at center ice. This is Kravchuk slapping it in. Joseph out of the crease to stop the puck. Blues up 4-1. Blues clear it to center ice and back into the Edmonton end. The Blues have been outshot 41-27, but they lead by three. They're changing. Ben at a right wing feed. Malfi shoots it in off of Hedick into center ice. He gets the puck back from Janney, not a butcher. Across the rink again to Hedekin. At center ice, too far for Miller. And Miller tries to steal. Camp from Bennett. Then finally gets it as Hedekin pokes it away. And the Blues work in. Here's Miller! A shot! And a save by Ranford. The rebound at the side of the net. Miller centers. Hall can't get the puck. He'll race to the near boards for it. Hall already has the hat trick. Finally, Kravchuk controls the puck for Edmonton. 3.45 to go. Kravchuk, poke check with the defense by Butcher, and then a puck carried in offside. 4-1 Blues in the third. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. On your next trip to the arena, get a free trip on the Alton Bell Casino. Introducing the new Alton Bell Blues breakaway card. Guaranteed to knock you out. It's your ticket for as many as four fun-filled free rides on the Alton Bell. Use it four times, and you'll be entered in a drawing to win two free tickets to the Stanley Cup playoffs. So if your goal is to have a little more fun, enjoy blues hockey and have a ball on the Alton Bell Casino. Get the breakaway card. It's a trip. Driver, do you have any Bud Light in your vehicle? Yes. And I am Mr. Gally Weekich. You mean Dr. Galakowicz? Yes, I am. This is so cool! First time in a limo? Doctor? In a limo this small. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Well, tonight's goal scoring recap. Big second period. Hall is 19th and 20th. Prokhorov is second. Then Rice, the only Edmonton goal. And Hall is scored. His 21st for a hat trick here in the third period. The goal scoring recap brought to you by your Midwest GMC truck dealers. Bellman, Bonarito, and Brockland GMC. 3.40 to go here in the third period. Blues control the puck. Hedekin clears it out. And back in his own end is Frederick Olison, the 27-year-old longtime Winnipeg Jet. He pulls up behind the Edmonton net. Boys are going to be nice to be home. The next four at the arena. Tampa Bay Thursday night. Then the Blackhawks, the Canadians, and the Rangers. Oilers shoot the puck in. Crossman up the boards. Seeger ties up Karamnov. Crossman falls down. Karamnov loses the puck. Seeger back to Beers at the near left point. Ahead to Seeger. Now on to course, and he's tied up. Pitched to the boards by Crossman. Seeger into the corner. Karamnov takes him out. And Crossman slips the puck up the boards, and Arnott intercepts. Then he's checked by Hedekin. A lot of time disappearing. Hedekin behind the net. Ahead for Pozon. He clears to center ice. Taking the puck. Pass in over the line. A screen and the shot is deflected wide. We're down to 2.42 to go. Now the two teams changing. Far right wing pass. Seeger over the line. Trying to work in on Shanahan. Centers and Butcher takes the puck. And it deflects into the crowd. We're down to 2.33 to go. In the third period of the Blues leading the Oilers 4-1. to one. And with this break in the action, it ought to be a great time to break for the great taste of Bud Light. 
It's a big hit with fans everywhere because it won't fill you up and never lets you down. So make it a Bud Light. Well, Bob Barry has certainly received some outstanding performances these last few games from some of his other players besides the top five or six, Prokhorov especially, Korolev even tonight. We've seen him throwing checks uh, most of the evening. The Blues have been checking a lot more in the final three games of this trip from the blue line a Manson shot and it's caught by Joseph who again has been extremely steady or better in this one here in Edmonton. We're down to 226 to go in the third. Well he hasn't faced the number of close in opportunities that he has been used to in the past and the shot clock uh, although 42 28 favoring Edmonton a very misleading figure in tonight's game because so many times the Edmonton players from outside the blue line instead of just dumping the puck in were taking shots on Curtis Joseph from the draw in the blue zone the puck over to Richardson from Manson a shot wide Buckberger tries to center does and Joseph knocks the puck away Ron Sutter who's played well in recent games advances it to Shanahan he'll just dump it in about 2 10 to go Manson back up the boards for weight He's checked by Korolev. Loose puck in the corner. Here's Luke Richardson. Passing it behind the net to Dave Manson. Up on the right wing it comes. And it's center ice. Viute over the line. Cutting to the middle. With DeBrusque and a shot. And Joseph makes the save. And holds the puck on that shot by Vladimir Viute. And there's a minute 50 to go. In the third, Blues four, Oilers one. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. In the heat of the night, weeknights at 11 on St. Louis 11. Well, the Oilers had a chance on the last rush. It was a three on three, and Louis DeBrusque, who was very big and strong, was able to shake, shake off the check, actually, of Korolev. And he just caused some traffic in the middle before Richardson was able to get the shot on Curtis Joseph. Fans remember every Wednesday, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch brings you inside hockey. A lot of great information. We hope you read the post, stay on top of your game. Wednesday, they have a recap of memorable quotes from around the league and also a look at the ex-Blues player of the week. Tomorrow morning in the post, you'll read about Brett Hall's 18th NHL hat trick. Here's Pearson trying to work in front of the Blues net. Now goes far dot, takes a shot, it deflects over the net. Here's Stephen Rice for Edmonton, Wade and Pearson in front. Then uh, Rice is checked, and the Blues clear the puck up off the boards. Basson tied up, but then Jim Montgomery gets the puck. He'll clear it the length of the ice. Adam Bennett back to play it, and an icing call against the Blues, down to 1.22 to go here in the third period. Well, we want to remind you about the excitement of the action coming up at home the holiday games coming up we've mentioned it tampa bay then the night after christmas chicago montreal on the 27th the rangers on the 29th you can call dial ticks 291-7600 to purchase your tickets of course tickets uh, available at the arena box office every day from 10 until 6 they accept american express mastercard discover card and visa and blues tickets also available at 49 tickets now locations including 11 locations at famous bar stores 12 uh, stop-offs at Streetside record stores, and of course you can purchase Blues tickets at all five Blue Note sports shops. And you'll want to stop by the Blue Note sports shop near you this week and pick up some late Christmas gifts. Very Blues. well done. How do you like that? I could go another minute or two. That was half ad lib, half reading. That was good. And most of the game we've made up anyway. Now a stoppage of play in the Blue Zone with a minute 10 to go. Well, we're all happy because it looks like the Blues are going to end the road trip with a victory. Three straight wins. I'm just happy that the road trip is over. I want to thank my lovely wife, Marlene, for the wonderful anniversary gift here in Edmonton this weekend and the rose that I have been displaying. That did not wilt? Yes, displayed it uh, prominently tonight in my uh, luxury blues, uh, navy blue sport coat. So it has uh, turned out to be a wonderful weekend here in Edmonton. Looking forward to getting home. Yes, we are, by the way. As nice as it has been in Edmonton, we're still going to head home. It's unfortunate it is so difficult to get home from Edmonton. Well, it's also difficult to get here. So you would expect <laughs> it would be difficult to get home. But we'll all be on, what, the 6 o'clock flight in the morning, 4.30 in the hotel lobby. I will meet you there. And if it's snowing too much, we've got a dog sled to replace the cab. Face off in the blue zone, and the Blues can't get the puck out. Long shot by Beers from the point. A weak one stopped by Joseph. Down to a minute to go. And Sutter clears the puck to center ice. 
Boy, amazing the Blues able to win their last three games on the trip. A pass intercepted by Sutter. Working in on the left wing. Sutter behind the net. Now taken out by Beers. Gets an elbow in the chops. Loose puck along the near boards. Here's Shanahan centering to chase the shot stop. And Sutter tips it wide on the rebound. And the puck in the corner with 36 seconds to go. Sutter centers and intercepting Seeger. Right wing to Corson. It's three on three over the line to Arnott. He's checked and taken to the boards by Sutter. Loose puck on the far wing. Here's Butcher advancing to center ice. Lose up four to one. Sutter shoots it in. No icing. Shanahan gets there, cuts in, and is stopped by Ranford with 15 seconds to go here in Edmonton. So the Blues will end up a tough road trip, three and three. They'll head home having won three in a row. At center ice, Crossman shoots the puck in. Four seconds to go. Could be icing. Beers touches the puck, and it is icing with one and four-tenths seconds remaining. So the Blues take some wind out of the sails of the Oilers. They had won three in a row coming into this game. And the Blues, seventh overall in the National Hockey League, will have a three-game winning streak as they go home to play four in a row. Boy, how quickly things can sound wonderful again, and what a perfect time of the year for good things to be happening to the Blues right here just before Christmas. Boy, there's some tremendous highs and lows in this game, aren't there, Ken? I mean, the Blues got off to such a great start earlier in the season. Then went through a, a string of games where they really struggled, and with the help of some of their younger players, like Jim Montgomery coming up, that gave the team a lift. And I thought Bob Barry did an excellent job deciding to change his lines around. To me, that's been a big difference in this team. A second to go, the faceoff near Joseph. They drop it. Corson can't get a good shot. And that's it, folks. The siren sounds here at the Northlands Coliseum and another big victory for Curtis Joseph and the Blues. Brett Hall has the hat trick. Vitaly Prokhorov gets the other goal and the Blues defeat the Oilers on the Edmonton Oilers home ice by a score of 4-1. to one. And we'll return to Edmonton to close things out in just a moment. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Tom McLaughlin for Joe and Bruce and Rick. I'm Ken Wilson. We wish you a happy holiday. And, of course, thanks for being with us at the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton, Alberta. Once again, the final score tonight, the St. Louis Blues 4, the Edmonton Oilers 1. St. Louis Blues Hockey has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of KPLR-TV and KMOX Radio. Our next telecast here on KPLR-TV St. Louis 11 will be one week from tonight, the night after Christmas, Sunday the 26th. It'll be the Blues and the Blackhawks live at 6 o'clock from the arena in St. Louis. Hockey has been brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Your Missouri, Illinois, Lincoln Mercury dealers, McDonald's restaurants, your place for extra value meals. By Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. The Discover Card, the card with the big payback. Your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Bomarito, and Brockland GMC. Alton Bell Casino, always your best bet. Boltman's with home equity loans designed to do just one sensible thing, save you money. Your neighborhood, St. Louis, Chrysler, Plymouth dealers. Corporate mortgage services, home loans are all we do. Hardy's restaurants for crispy, juicy fried chicken. And buy Coca-Cola, always best on ice, always Coca-Cola.